Okay, Matthew 18, verse 15. <coughs> Remember what book we're in. We're in Matthew. There is no church in Matthew. Though you can find the word church. Jesus said, Peter, upon me, Jesus is going to build a church. He didn't build it yet. It's not started. Church does not begin until Pentecost. Moreover, thy brother, Jewish brother, look at the law. Law mentions brother, neighbor. That's not brother like brother and sister in the church. But you can apply verses 15, 16, and 17. I'm going to show you in a moment. Shall trespass against thee. Any trespass, it doesn't say offense. Trespass is, there's a line. There's a fence. There's a boundary line. You know, when I was a child, we grew up, we used to draw a line and say, go ahead, cross this line, and you're in trouble. That's what, that's what it is. You trespass. And he's not trespass against God, he's trespass against you. Go. Look at all the places go shows up in the... And yet go is not followed by Christians. And tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Go to that person and say, hey, listen, you know, you, you wronged me, you did something wrong. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So I had a pastor one time, well, you know, this family doesn't appreciate what you do and how things do. I said, you don't know what the Bible says. What? What are you doing telling me what another Christian says about me? How I offended them? Well, they told me. And I was, no, 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 Pastor. The Bible says that they are to come to me. Well, they, uh, they, no, your job is to say, you got a problem against a brother in this church, you go to them personally. Well, 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 I bet you haven't done that. I said, there are two people in this church I went quietly talked to about a problem they had. Well, who are they? Scripture says none of your business because we, well, sort of made it right. I've been in churches where I've gone up to somebody. No one knew. I said, listen, you know, it's not a pastor's business to hear somebody and get a problem with somebody in the church. And no, 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 no. You tell that person, you go talk to themselves. That's what the scripture, there it is, Matthew 18, 15. You want to run to Matthew and come up with church doctrine, how's that one? And things get right, and he maybe he never knew, maybe he didn't understand, maybe he had no knowledge. He said, oh, I'm sorry, and then, you know, you got yourself a brother. But be ready if somebody comes up to you and has a problem with you. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, that's the law, that's the law, that's the law. Every word may be a step. All right, so he won't hear you, then say, you know what? You find two people, two or three, that both of you know, both of you are acquainted with, and you go to the person. Say, brother, sister, you know, I talked to you about this before. I brought Joe and Mike with me. We can get this thing solved. Please, let there be no, let there be no problem between you and me. Paul will go say later on to the Corinthian church, you're not deemed to take him to court. But let's, and if he neglect to hear them, Tell it on to the church. Okay, there's the church. Church is a body of believers. So this is a future reference to the church. Like we talked about a couple chapters ago with Jesus, I'm going to build my church. Jesus is already preparing the church. We're coming up to the book of Acts. You know, Paul had a problem with Peter. And he took Peter off the side and rebuked him. But if you neglect to hear the church. All right, now you go to the pastor. 
and the deacons. That's step three. That's not step one. Oh, we go to the, the people go to the church. Oh, the pastor, I don't like my mom, pastor. Blah, 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 blah. Or the little gossip session in the nursery, but they don't go the first 15 to the person themselves. That's in violation of the scriptures. In the book of Matthew, where most where churches run to, open your Bible to Matthew. But if he neglect to hear the church, he won't listen to you, he won't listen to one or two witnesses, or three, and he won't listen to the authority in the church. Let him be unto thee as a heathen, a Gentile. You're talking about Jews. <laughs> what, what a name to call a Jew. Here's a Jewish person, he won't listen to nobody, you're just as worse as the heathen. You're just as worse as a Gentile. Ooh, that would have got Jonah upset. Ooh, that would kick Peter's can. And a publican. That's, that's you know, worse than worse in the Bible. Even the Pharisees would come out. Ew, he eats with publicans and sinners. <laughs> there are people who have not followed 15, 16, 17 in order. There are people who have trespassed against Christians in the church and they're in favor of the pastor and all the hierarchy. Okay? Verily I say unto you. So there is a rule and regulations in the Bible on what you to do if somebody trespasses against you and we run right to number three. And the pastor listens. And the pastor's in violation of the scriptures. I told that to the pastor. And he got upset with me. And told me his problem. I said, hey, this is scripture, is it not? You're the one violating scriptures, not me. I had a problem with his Sunday school teacher. I took him right off to the side. I can show you the very spot away from people. I said, what you said today in Sunday school, you're wrong. There was somebody else in church. I took him off to the side. I can show you the very spot. Say, listen, to People tell me, I know, well, they don't like the bumper stickers. And have them come tell me. You know, I've seen that with the street ministry. You know, don't go up to a nine year old, eight year old, nine year old, ten year old girl, the daughter, they won't come to me. So, a Christian that does it in a church, you're, you're worse than the heathen because the heathen, you know, I don't want to deal with them. Because he might know what he's talking about. <laughs> That's the problem. So. Now, 1818 is a book of Acts. And 19. The, the disciples now going to be apostles are going to go out in the book of Acts with the church. They're going to start in Jerusalem. They're going to work their way out. And when Paul comes along, they've got a little problem. But I say to you, who whatsoever, so we're talking about what, ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever ye shall loose on earth, shall be loose in it. That's not a church. That's the authority of the apostles. He will tell them in the Gospel of John, I'm not going to quote it verbatim. Um, if two of you or three of you Agree with each other, it shall be established. Okay. You know how many times I got three, four, five, six people in church say, All right, I wish the rapture would happen right now, and it don't. Again, I say unto you that if two or three shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask. And it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. All right, now the illustration one is Paul had a problem. And James, the church leader in Jerusalem, had a problem. Paul, you are treating these Gentiles that got saved not like the Jews. Now let me tell you, in the book of Acts, and we ever get there, Lord willing, 
you're going to find that James was teaching the Jews in Jerusalem, obey the law. Not for salvation, but you're surrounded by people who follow the law. All right, because you have a freedom now, don't go eat pork sandwiches, Peter. If I was to sit down with an unsaved Jewish person or people at a restaurant, I would not order a pork sandwich. I would not order lobster. I would order something that's kosher because they are doing something kosher and I would not want to offend them, especially being Jews. I would ask them before I order some, I say, excuse me, sir, if I order, is this kosher? Would this be allowed? Would I offend you? Then we just do that in 16, 17? I mean, uh, if, if, if a brother offend me, okay, And what's going on is James is teaching the Jews to be Jews. Paul has this thing for the Gentiles and some of the Jews. Though at one time he took Timothy and had him circumcised because his father was Greek because they didn't have private stalls for the bathrooms. And they would look at Timothy like, uh-huh. Oh, Greek, Gentile you are amongst the Jews. So James has a little thing with, with Paul and Paul has a little thing you know there are these saved Jews and they're doing things with the law. So Paul heads back to Jerusalem under the guidance of, of, of the Holy Spirit and Jesus. This is not where God, the Holy Spirit said don't go. He meets up with James, he meets up with Peter and John, the pillars of the church. He says, listen, we got a problem here. You guys say this among the Jews. Paul, you're saying this to the Gentiles. So they sit down with the council. James draws up, he says, okay, for the Gentiles that get saved, you're not to eat anything strangled, anything with blood, and flee fornication. Signed, sealed, and delivered by the apostles. And they put it down in writing. Paul takes the writing and he goes off to the to the Gentile. Uh, you know, to the yeah, Gentile. That's what we're talking about right here. It has been signed before God. This is what we're going to tell the Gentiles who get saved. Because there was nothing else. Remember Cain? God could not charge him with murder because there was no murder until Noah came out of the ark. So when the pillars of the Jew Jewish church in Jerusalem and Paul, the missionary to Jews and Gentiles, get together, they draw out this thing and they sign, seal it by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and it becomes official. There it is. That's what we're reading. And Paul's not there. Peter has that kind of thing when he goes visits Cornelius. When he comes back to the Jews, they start yelling at him. And he's like, well, wait a minute, hold on. And then the end of the story is, oh, oh now the Gentiles are getting the salvation. And this is a concord. All right. The Gentiles are no more dead dogs. They're, they're part of the body of Christ when they get saved. All right, that's signed, sealed, delivered. That's not the Catholic Church coming up with their councils of, of blasphemy. Because when the blast apostle, I forget which one it is, the book of, book of, Fox and book of Mars, when the last apostle dies, there are no more apostles. There's no apostle uh, ascension. <coughs> Excuse me. You see apostle church and somebody says they're apostles, they're liars. Plain and simple. Okay, now, moving on. How many of you have heard this one? And the Lord showed me this last week, I think it was. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You ever hear that? Even I've said it. So let me ask you a question. A Christian goes out on, on a cruise. The ship hits a rock and sinks. He's the only one that ends up on a desert island. 
Are you telling me because there's no two or three Christians with him on that island, Jesus is not there? Are you telling me a, a, a man or woman, a, a mother or father or husband or wife goes in their prayer closet, like in their prayer closet, they get down on their knees or they sit, whatever they pray, they're praying before God. There's no other in that room. There's no one else there. Are you telling me that Jesus is not there? Or the Bible says, I'll never leave thee or forsake. What? The Holy Spirit comes out of your body? Hey, even I've been guilty of saying that. I guarantee there has been, in church history, I guarantee there's been a time when a pastor has gone to church, gone up to the pulpit, and there's been no one there. And he goes and prays and, and, and worships before God. Are you in trouble? Are you in two or three. A Christian is in a hospital bed. A Christian is in a nursing home. A Christian is in an auto accident. No one else there that's saved. Are you telling me that Jesus is not there? A Christian like uh, uh, Richard Rumber is put into a prison. I say his last name. I can't say his last name correctly. Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan. John Bunyan. I always get the two mixed up. John Bunyan is in prison by himself. There's nobody who's a Christian in that cell, though. Are you telling me that Jesus was not there when he came up with the second greatest Christian book, Pilgrim's Progress? You tell me Jesus wasn't there because there was two or three? Are you telling me that Richard Ronbar couldn't... So what are you doing stuff? They would tap out messages on the Christian walls. When we are in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. Not yet. Not Matthew 18. There's a point that Jesus is going to have to breathe on them to receive the Holy Spirit. Are you daring to say that you don't receive the Holy Spirit in the church until Jesus breathes on you? That's the disciples. So anything that you ask in my name of the Father, that's the disciples. You got to be careful when you go and grab a scripture and name it and claim it. Now we have something. Actually, we have several things that are better than the apostles, the disciples. We have a completed 66 books of the Bible. Paul didn't have that. Paul be writing. Okay. Number three of my 13 epistles that they're going to put in the Bible. I don't have you. I don't think Paul would ever had the book of Revelation. We have the completed canon of scripture, 66 books. Paul didn't have Jesus didn't have that. You know, Jesus did not sit down with the multitudes and say, All right, take your Bibles open to oh wait a minute, we're not done with Matthew writing it yet. Matthew, will you hurry up and finish your book so I can quote it? Luke, John, Mark. Everything. We have in us the indwelling Holy Spirit. There was a group of people that Paul met. They, they, they got saved. They were right with God. He says, well, we didn't hear anything about the Holy Spirit. Well, what baptism were you baptized? John's baptism. And he had to expel the scriptures more. And then they got saved and got the Holy Spirit. At one point early in the book of Acts, they got saved by Philip. And John and Peter, believe, had to come, had to lay hands on them to get the Holy Spirit. That's not us. Matthew is not a church doctrine book. Now, you can spiritually apply. Now, listen, this is not a church book, but I spiritually applied what you're to do if you have trespass against a neighbor. But that's not in the church epistle. Now, I'm not Paul only is him. Paul says you're not to take each other to court. So evidently, if you if you offended a brother, it would go get so bad you'd take him to court. Paul said, "Don't do that." 
Where two or three are gathered together in my name, he's speaking to the disciples. He's not speaking to no Gentiles, and there is no church. That's the air of a preacher I know. Well, there's Christians in the Old Testament. No. You want to know what it is? I'm going to, I'm going to sit down maybe one day and make a message. In the Old Testament, they're called saints. In the New Testament, they're called Christians. So they'll go into song, you know, rejoice in the saints as we go in the house of the Lord. That's not today. We are Christians. Daniel is not a Christian. I heard a preacher say, oh, no, Daniel, they were Christian. No, they weren't. They were saints. you got to get the Bible right. Now, after two or three gathered together in my name, they're unmissable. And he's talking to the disciples. Did you notice in the book of Acts, no disciple was left alone except for Peter in prison? They were together. They paired themselves. Paul had Luke with him his entire ministry. All right. Then came Peter. And, you know, when you're in the, when you're in the Gospels and you hear Peter's like, uh oh. Now, Jesus just got done saying, if a man trespass against you, verse 15, go deal with him. Peter is going to act like what the church does. Then Peter came and said, Lord, how often my brother, my brother, uh, is there a church or they're Christians? No, that's Jewish. You know what neighbor means in the law? It could be anybody that's in your your street. It could be anybody in your city. It could be anybody in Judah. It could have been anybody in Issachar. It could have been anybody in Dan. It could have been anybody in Simeon. It could have been anybody in Reuben. It could have been anybody in the land of Israel. So Peter has a problem. Why would he say that? How often shall my brother sin against me? And you know to be asking this question, you know there has to be somebody on Peter's mind. Because why would a question happen? And then you got, I like to, maybe I'm wrong, and if I am, I could, I'll confess it in the blood of Jesus Christ. But you got to wonder, here are 12 men running around. One of them was a tax collector. You know he was hated. Four of them are fishermen. If you don't know what fishermen are like, they are the most rowdiest crew ever, and they all carry knives. I guarantee that John said that there are things that happen with Jesus and disciples are not even recorded. I guarantee Jesus had to break up many fights with them. Because there are some cases that he had to written in the scripture. They're talking, well, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And Jesus turns around, who do you think he the greatest is? I guarantee Jesus had plenty of time of, oh, brother, why did I choose these guys? I imagine when Jesus went off to pray all by himself to the Father, Father, you got to be kidding. You see what these guys did? You hear what they're fighting about? Do you hear what? Every time so far, Father, I mentioned, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. I'm going to be resurrected. Well, who's the greatest? Excuse me, Lord. Yes, ma'am. He won my son sit in your right hand, and can another man sit in your left hand? And then you wonder why they're not at the tomb three days and three nights later, because they were not paying attention. Jesus takes them up to the mountain of transfiguration. He turns around. They're asleep. He goes off into the garden. He prays three times. He comes back. They're asleep. I guarantee the Last Supper, I guarantee they probably fought. A bunch of people, should, now listen, I'm trying to share what the Bible says with these disciples. A bunch of people come, 5,000 people are there. They're like, Jesus, get rid of them. Will you? 
4000 there. Come on, Jesus. Send them in. Let them go buy their own food. They ain't got the money, but go get their own food. There's a there's a there's a Gentile. Oh Lord God, my do my daughter is possessed with the devil. Lord God, help oh King of David, help my daughter. Jesus, will you get her out of here? She's bugging us. Jesus, we got this whole mode. Who you mean who touched you? I just got an elbow in the face. I just got one in the rib. You're worried about one person that touched you? Listen, the life of those disciples was not hunky-dory. I can imagine Matthew probably felt like he was, he was a little minnow amongst the four fishermen. And it's funny because the night of the Lord's Supper, John finally asked him, who is he? He says, it's the one I dipped my hand in the, in the south. Immediately, Judas dips his hand in the south, takes off. They think, well, maybe he's going to go get some money for the poor people. Maybe he's going to buy some bread. If Peter would have got what Jesus just said what happened at that table, more than an ear would have been cut off that night. So here is Peter. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? I've got to ask myself, is it one of the eleven? Because don't tell me they got along hunky-dory, wonderful, great, saying kumbaya. I can imagine somebody would go up there. You know, Mr. First Pope, you're married and you got a mother in law. As a Catholic Jew. How about what do you think what John thought? Did you read, I forget what gospel was. It says John brought Peter into the castle where he would warm his hands by the fire because he knew the high priest. It was John that brought him into that room. And, it, and John's out of the picture now. You can imagine John knows that Jesus, blankety blank, don't know him. You imagine John? These are his friends. And Peter goes yelling. Maybe he's friends with a girl. <laughs> and maybe that moment, the third time when the cock crew, Jesus turns around. Maybe John's like, did you think about that? So here Peter is. I gotta wonder if it's one of the disciples. How often shall my brother sin against me? Sin against me. Peter calls it sin. Jesus said, you know, you could trespass against somebody and not be a sin. I mean, you know the Baptist church, the trespass is, you sat in my pew last weekend. Don't do it again. Brother, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You parked in my parking spot. And in the Baptist church, it could be anything. You you sent to all the church members the King James Bible versus the, the, the modern Bibles. I'm offended, says the Southern Baptist Church dealing with me. Well, that's tough cookies to you. I did what's right. Would you like to get two or three? <laughs> I think you stop at this. How often shall my brother sin against me? I forgive him. Till seven times? <laughs> seven. Is, isn't seven enough, Jesus? Who in Peter's life that he would have to mention such a number as seven? I don't think he pulled that number out of hand. If he did, seven in the Bible is complete. Seven complete. I mean, seven times complete. That's it. What happens after eight? <laughs> Look at Peter. Seven times. Now, this is not where the Baptist would count. One, two, three. No, no, that's not the Baptist time. 
Our last verse, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, unto seven times, Peter, but unto seventy times seven. Now the Baptist would be 39, 40, 41, 40. You know, you know what my instructor in college told me when we went through Matthew? He says, if you got a count, 70 times 7 is 490 times. If you have gotten up to 300, you are out of place in sinning against God. Because Jesus puts it to, you're not supposed to count. It's unlimited. Who would be foolish enough to count 490 times? Probably Peter in his own nature would. Your Baptist would. And so the whole idea of forgiving, and you must, because if you don't forgive, you have sinned. You will get the, the goal of bitterness. And that's hard to get rid of. Now, I had one time, I was I was in a predicament with a Christian. He had done me wrong. I forsake the whole thing instead of going up and talking to him. And I got bitter, I got and I got angry, and it got worse. I didn't do what the Bible told me to do. Probably one time I was saying, you know what? That guy's going to sleep. That guy doesn't even know I'm mad at him. That guy has no idea. I'm the one who gets mad. I'm the one who wakes up in the middle of the night and thinking about it. I'm the one. Yeah. So I went up to the person. I said, listen, you and I have fought each other. And I'll tell you right now, I apologize for my fault. Now, he did not apologize for his fault. That's between him and God. But I did what God told, told me to do. I don't feel better. I got rid of that bitterness. I did what God told me to do. Number one thing, if you do have bitterness against somebody, a Christian or an unsaved person, what you got to do is what you did not do, what Jesus told you to do in Matthew. You got to take that person off all by yourself. You and that person alone, you got to say, listen, we got a problem. 50% of the chance of the time is they don't know they have a problem. Or you got a problem. And if you do what the Bible tells you to do, and they don't forgive you, and you forgive them, so be it. And don't do what Peter did, or seven times... <laughs> Well, it's it's 489, God. What do I do now? God be like, what are you doing counting? Because if I were to get your record out, how many times have I forgiven you? Do you think I keep count? Every time you say forgive me, I... Forgive and I cleanse you. I wash it out of the book. There is no more numbering. That's how God does it. And we ought to act like what God does for us. He forgives us, then he cleanses us. They say, forgive me, I sin. You are to forgive them, and you are to cleanse it. And the hardest thing is to forgive. Is that's not the hardest thing. The hardest thing for humans is to forget, but don't dwell on it. When you dwell on it, well, this is what happened. They did this to me. This has happened. This is happened. That's your sin. That's your problem. And you don't go running off to a doctor. You go running off to Jesus. Well, you, you know, you see what they did to me. That's okay. You know what you've done to me? You know what you did to that person? 
You think you're clean and, and empty and, and without sin? I'm sorry, you're not my son. Now, I didn't say not remember because things are hard to, to, to forget. Unless you get Alzheimer's or any one of those other things. Sometimes I think that may be a blessing for some people because you get that all time and then you don't remember. <laughs> Problem is you don't remember your loved ones and all that. But you've got to do what Jesus did, what God does. We confess it. He forgives us. He cleanses us. And he don't send you to a doctor. Paul told Timothy, all right, take a little wine for your stomach infirmities and that's it. Real medical conditions. Today they got red pills, blue pills, they got alcohol, they got beer, they got cigarettes, they got drugs, they got everything. But you have no peace. Because you don't do what the Bible tells you you do, and you don't do what your Savior does. You did not forgive, and you did not cleanse it. Now I'm going to tell you something else. If you don't do what the Bible tells you to do, don't expect God to do for you what you won't do. That's plain and simple. You never get to the 489 times. And if you are if you know you're at the 489 times, you're in trouble. And you don't go running to the pastor the third the first time. You run to the person. Then if that don't work, you get two, three people who know you and know that person and probably knows the circumstance. Don't get three people that are your friends, three people that are your buddies. That's an unclean, unholy uh, measure. And the book of Proverbs says that God does not like diverse measurements. And then if that don't work, then you go to your pastor, then you deal with your pastor, and that guy still doesn't work. You make a church degree, you're not in the church no more, you can't have forgiveness for, for your brethren, you, you cannot do what God told you to do, you need to leave the church. And in 2022, with the very few churches that are open, you can find a church down the street maybe and say, oh yeah, come on in, all welcome here. But you're never going to get it right with God, and you're never going to get it right with your heart. Woe be to the day that you can't afford that doctor, you can't afford those bills, you can't afford that alcohol, you can't afford it no more. And it's just you and God. Problem is, you got a tree called bitterness. And when it takes root, you got a mighty problem. Bible says, stand in Proverbs, stand before an angry man, stand before a furious man. Woe be him that stands to an envy. And look who stood up, Peter. <laughs> Seven times, Lord? <laughs> what are you thinking about, Peter? Why did you have to say that? In verse 23 on, we'll look at another tomorrow night, Lord willing. We're going to look about a man being forgiven. But he didn't forgive others. And it's not a church age doctrine. That guy will end up in hell. It's not church age doctrine, but you want to be forgiven? You better forgive others. That's what we're going to look at next tomorrow night, Lord willing.